Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from King Martini Cross Nation. And for today's video, we're going to be going over on how to use status elements properly, as well as going over them, how exactly do they work, and all, all that good stuff in today's video. Now, before we get to the actual main purpose of the content, which is like how to use them properly and stuff, I want to quickly go over as to how exactly each of the skills actually work uh, by themselves first and such before we get to that part. As of right now, there are only three status ailments within the game. Uh, the first one being poison. In PvP, poison inflicts damage at the end of the round and helps you give extra points. If you have the pet skill poison boost, which you can get at a uh, pet rank of seven or level seven, however you want to word it, um, that would actually provide extra damage. Uh, when the poison goes off, which also gives you extra points. In PvP, if you use poison and you have the poison boost, it will roughly give you around a million extra points in damage, uh, which is very relevant a lot of times. Sometimes that actually ends up being the main tiebreaker uh, when you're fighting someone of like relevantly equal strength and stuff. It's simply because of poison. The second type of status ailment that you need to be aware of is sleep. S what sleep does is that it makes you skip metals at the beginning of your setup roughly around one or two but it goes away after you hit them so basically if you inflict sleep on the enemy but then you continue to go on to hit them again with a different metal uh the sleep will go away because you basically like you know woke them up all right but if you have the sleep boost skill the for the pet skill which is also from rank seven pet comes with two charges and what it does is that the enemy can be hit up to three times before the sleep skill will actually go away kind of you know waking them up just keep in mind that you only have two charges so that means that the first two times that you try putting them to sleep that or like you activate the sleep skill to put it on them to afflict it on them uh that will use up a charge each time so and as of right now anyways at level seven you only have two charges the third type of status ailment within the game is paralysis uh this one within pvp is by far one of the best and what it does is that it has a chance of skipping one uh, one or both of the first two medals. Um, and the Paralysis Boost pet skill, which is also at rank seven, this only has one charge, in which case the first time you would inflict Paralysis on your opponent is the time that it would uh, activate on the opponent. It only has one charge, in which case that means that once you inflict Paralysis on the opponent, that is when you are gonna use up your first and only charge of the Paralysis Boost. And what the Paralysis Boost does, is that it guarantees that it will immobilize the opponent. What this means is that uh, when it's the opponent's turn, if they got paralyzed for the first time, you know, and you had your boost go off, they will guarantee skip their first two medals. Keep in mind this only lasts for one turn though, so once you use it up, it's gone. Now aside from the three main types of status ailment skills uh, within the game, uh, there's also another pet skill that you guys obviously need to be very aware of too, which is the Asuna pet skill which you can get at level four and you only get one charge and what it does is that when a status ailment skill would activate on you not when it gets inflicted but when it actually activates on you is when asuna will kick in and completely erase all status elements that are actually on you at that point in time you only have one charge though so once you use asuna it's gone and that's part of the strategy that becomes involved in pvp so now that I've gone over all what are the different types of status element skills that are effective in the game as well as some of the pet skills too, let's go over how exactly the interactions would occur in terms of both uh, as the, an attacker and as a defender when using status elements within the game. Alright, so first of all, we're going to start off as an attacker. So assuming that we don't know which of the three status elements you're afflicting on the opponent, uh, let's just quickly go over how exactly the turns would play out, uh, assuming you're using status elements every single turn. For turn one, and this one should be fairly obvious, is that when you inflict status elements on your opponent, once it becomes their turn, uh, it's going to go away. And the same thing for them, if they try inflicting status elements on you, uh, it's going to go away at the end of the round as well. So essentially, and when I say go away, I mean as in like both you and your opponent's pet skills for their Asuna are going to completely get rid of uh, the status elements that you have within the first turn. And that is essentially the main goal behind most uh, status ailment skills is to get rid of a turn one. So, so that way the status ailment skills become more effective in turns two and three. So now that I've covered that, let's actually go a little bit more specific now in terms of which of the status element skills will be effective when and where and such, okay? So in terms of poison, poison, so ignoring the fact that we get rid of the Asuna turn one, poison 
would be effective for all of the other turns simply because of the fact that it will stay on the opponent until they get rid of the poison in some way shape or form through like a metal uh, that gets rid of status elements for example so let's say turn two both you and your opponent decide to inflict poison on each other okay so we'll do a big p Okay, both you and your opponent inflict poison on each other. On your on both of your third turn keyblades, you don't have any skills that inflict poison whatsoever. This poison that's on that's on both of you will carry over into the next round until it's gotten rid of. Because the fact you guys don't have medals that get rid of the status ailment, it will carry over and it will stay on you and it will keep adding points until the end of the match or until uh, you have a medal that gets rid of it. And of course, if you decide to not use any status elements turn one, so this is just completely not there, and you decide to use it turn two, uh, your the Asuna will get rid of it uh, turn two, and it will only be effective turn three. And this is a good example, but please keep in mind that for all status elements, the earlier they get rid of the Asuna, the better, because it only makes your job easier uh in terms of using status elements more efficiently so now that we've taken a look at that let's go ahead and take a look at sleep if we are the attacker and we're using sleep uh keep in mind that sleep does go away after a hit or if you have the pet skill at level seven it'll go away uh, after up to three hits and the boost does go off every single time you inflict the sleep skill okay doesn't matter if the sleep actually goes off or not doesn't matter if you woke him up already or not once you've actually inflicted sleep on the opponent the sleep boost will go off so what would happen right here is that let's say let's go turn by turn you and your opponent inflict status summons on each other doesn't matter what it is you waste the asuna okay so as soon as it's gone it's used up turn one so what happens turn two is that the opponent goes first um let's say they use sleep on you as well in order for sleep to actually be effective against you they would have to use sleep assuming they have the pet skill at level seven they would have to use sleep within the last couple metals of their setup that they have round two because that would be the only way in which you actually be still sleeping uh, in order to skip your medals right here so you'll probably end up skipping your first few medals right here in round two and you'll only have about four medals left and in pvp that's very critical in which case you have a good chance of probably losing round two in round three if you're using sleep it's it's basically just the exact opposite if you can use sleep within the last couple medals of your keyblade setup you can then sleep your opponent they will skip their first two medals uh, or one or two medals and then uh, they're probably gonna lose the last round as well that's how sleep works okay now after stating that let's take a look at paralysis paralysis is almost exactly the same as sleep okay just slight difference uh, so same thing if we get rid of the Asuna turn one uh, the opponent on round two then if we go to round two uh, they're probably gonna put paralysis on you which would make you use up your first two medals most likely okay depends the only problem with paralysis is because in fact you both used your paralysis already in turn one to get rid of each other's asuna uh that also means that you used up the boost the uh paralysis boost that your pet skill has and you only have one charge for paralysis so that boost is gone right here and the chances of your uh medals being skipped right here in turn two are completely random all right you have no control as to whether or not they'll actually get skipped. And the same thing applies for right here in round three. Okay, if you inflict paralysis on your opponent because of the fact you already used up the boost right here in turn one, uh, it's completely random whether or not their medals will actually get skipped or not. And the same thing would apply if you choose to waste their Suna on turn two instead of turn one. Let's say you just have no status elements turn one. Um, so you don't make them waste it, but you make them waste it on turn two because you're going second anyways. In which case, turn three will still end up being the same type of scenario, in which case you might make them skip it. All right, so now that we've looked at the attacking side of the equation, let's go ahead and look at as to what would happen if you're the defending side. Uh, how would the status elements play out? Okay, and this, this should go a little bit quicker since we've already kind of covered it on the attacking side. But let's go poison first. Poison, like I mentioned before, is best when it goes off as many times as possible for many rounds. So if you can uh, get rid of your opponent's as soon as turn one and then inflict it on your opponent turn two, uh, your poison will stick around right here unless they get rid of it. And then it'll even carry over into the third round and then do more damage right here in the third round too. Um, so that's poison. 
for sleep is the exact same thing as when you're attacking. Uh, you get rid of Asuna to turn one. If you can inflict sleep on your opponent and use sleep within the last couple medals, uh, you'll make them skip at least one or two medals within turn two, and you have a good chance of beating them turn two. And the same thing is uh, happening on turn three. It's just the exact opposite. The opponent's going to do on you first, um, in which chance you might possibly lose turn three. Now, what if we're using paralysis? Uh, paralysis is pretty much going to be the exact opposite as to what happens uh, as the defender. Um, so let's say you both choose to erase each other's Asuna turn one because of the fact that you're going first round two what that means is that you have a chance you're able to inflict this paralysis first and then it's completely random as to whether or not uh, paralysis will go off and make them skip medals and then the same thing is uh, applies to turn three but just for the opponent on you instead all right that's what happens if you choose to make them waste their Asuna uh, turn two instead uh, the opponent will have the first chance to inflict paralysis on you but it's completely random as to whether or not the medals will actually be skipped so that right there was a quick explanation as to how each of the status ailment skills actually uh work out in terms of turns and stuff in pvp and going from there let's actually talk about the pros and cons of each of the actual existing uh status ailment skills within the game uh to try and help your chances out as much as possible to help you guarantee as many wins as possible using status ailment uh related strategies all right so as of right now in the game, there's pretty much four main types of skills within the game. There's poison only skills, there's paralysis only skills, there's sleep only skills, and there's triple threat skills. All right, we haven't talked about triple threat yet, but I'll get to, get to that in a sec. Um, but for the other three, the main three types, there are skills specifically related to just them, but of course of varying degrees of power level. So like there's the base vanilla poison skill, but there's also poison plus and poison two plus in which those versions actually uh, have a chance of going off when you use your special attack as well, um, not just when you tap or swipe on people. And that happens for all three for poison paralysis and sleep. Triple threat. Triple threat is the fourth type of status ailment skill, in which case that if triple threat goes off, you will inflict all three types of status ailments on the opponent. Now, when it comes to PvP, uh, all four of these skills have their pros and cons. And some are more useful than others for different types of situations as well. Let's start from the top and talk about triple threat first. Any type of power level of triple threat. So whether it be triple threat 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, whatever happens in the future, a triple threat in general is basically a double-edged sword. The good things about triple threat is that it helps guarantee uh, that your opponent will get the status elements on the opponent, as well as the fact you don't have to worry about trying to uh, put together specific setups for every single keyblade that pops up in PvP um, in order to help guarantee that your opponent still gets the status ailments every single time. It helps. It basically helps ease of access to the status ailments, basically. And because of the fact it does inflict all three, and inflicts poison, sleep, and paralysis, not only do they have a chance of their medals being skipped because of the paralysis or the sleep, um, but you also get extra points for, because of the damage um, from the poison every single time. Um, aside from the turn that the Suna wipes it out. However, like I mentioned before, triple threat is a double-edged sword. Here are the cons about triple threat. Uh, when you use triple threat in the game, it uses up all of your pet skill charges very fast. Um, considering that you only have two charges for sleep, at least as of right now at level 7 pet skills, maybe we'll get more in the future, but at least as of right now. Every single time triple threat would go off, that will automatically use up one charge of sleep. It's even worse for paralysis because in fact we only have one charge of paralysis. So whenever is the first time you use triple threat, that's also going to be the first and last time that your paralysis boost is going to go off. Uh, so let's say worst case scenario, you decide to use triple threat turn one. Not only does it use up so many of your charges right away immediately, but at the same time, because of the fact it is turn one, that also guarantees their opponent is just going to completely wipe out all the status elements that you inflicted uh, because of their pet Asuna skill. So not only did you just waste all of your pet skill charges, but your opponent just completely wiped away everything that you just did too in terms of status elements, and that can hurt a little bit. Uh, so, and the same thing would apply turn two so let's say you choose not to use status elements turn one and you want to use triple threat turn two instead the same thing is going to happen it doesn't matter where you do it so you're much better off uh, in terms of triple threat just using it turn one uh, to at the very least uh, get rid of their Asuna and use the other status element skills within turn two and three uh, and hope they go off 
So going down the list, let's talk about paralysis. So we're going to actually quickly take a look between attacking and defending. Okay, so when you're attacking, regardless of whether or not you're an attacker or defender, you have to in some way, shape or form, get rid of their Asuna turn one, but you want to try and get rid of it without using your paralysis boost. So basically what that means is that you need to try and use either sleep or poison with their turn one and not paralysis. Uh, in order to try and bait out and waste their Asuna turn one. So that way you can still have your paralysis boost from your pet skill available on either turns two or three. That is the strategy in terms of paralysis specifically. So let's say we're in terms of attacking. The best strategy for paralysis that you want to try and evolve is to, first of all, make them waste their Asuna turn one in some way, shape, or form. You could ignore turn two because you're going second and chances are, let me put that E there, and chances are that they might put a status ailment on you, make you skip your first two medals or so, and you might lose, you might just completely lose turn two. So it really comes down to turn three, simply because of the fact you have the initiative turn three since you're going first. And right here is where you want to use paralysis for the first time, preferably, ideally. Um, inflicts paralysis on them, the boost, okay, will go off turns three, and that will guarantee that your opponent skips their first two medals uh, round three, and they'll most likely lose round three. That is the strategy for at least as, as an attacker uh, for paralysis. Now, let's say you are a defender in terms of paralysis. How would this work out? So the same exact thing as an attacker, you want to make him waste their Asuna turn one. Because of the fact you're going first, this is your primary uh, moment to try and guarantee the win. Okay, because of the fact that paralysis is best used when going first. In terms of being a defender, your round two is your one and only chance to try and guarantee the win using a paralysis uh, boost from the pet skill. All right. So in that regards, you want to use paralysis round two instead as a defender, so that way you can inflict paralysis on them, use your boost for their first time, and that will guarantee that their first two medals get skipped and they'll most likely lose round two. That is your best bet in terms of paralysis. And because of the fact you're going uh, second in round two, uh, like I mentioned before as an attacker, the attacker is going to have the advantage and most likely inflict this st uh, status element on you and you might end up just losing round three. Sleep is going to end actually end up being the exact same scenario as paralysis. As an attacker, you want to make sure that you, you waste their Asuna turn one. Uh, Ignore turn two and then use sleep right here on turn three to try and get the win. Just remember, use sleep towards the end of your keyblade to make sure it stays on your opponent. The same thing, like paralysis, is going to apply for sleep as a defender. Make them waste their center turn one. All right. Uh, use sleep right here on turn two to try and guarantee the win on turn two. And for poison, poison is probably one of my favorites, uh, even though it might not be one of the best, but it's definitely one of my favorite status elements. In which case that, let's say, uh, and it's actually going to be the exact same regardless if you're an attacker or defender. In which case you want to make them waste their Asuna turn one. So that way you can try and inflict poison on both turn two and turn three if possible, ideally. So that way you can try and get the extra bonus million points. Uh, both turns two and three uh, to try and increase your chances of winning. All right, so now that I've gone over what are the best actual tactics in terms of how to use uh, status ailments specifically and individually and stuff, um, how they work within the different uh, aspects of PvP in terms of rounds and who's attacking, defending and such, let me give you guys some quick ideas and tips as to how you can possibly go about trying to guarantee to make these strategies work and such, okay? So like I mentioned before, triple threat is a double-edged sword. As of right now, at the time of making this video, almost everybody has triple threat, but I have... Uh, a lot of people might be start realizing at this point already that it's kind of hard to use triple threat, uh, at least in all three setups for your keyblade, because of the fact of what I mentioned earlier. That because of the fact that triple threat uh, uses up your pet skill charges super fast, and if triple threat is all you have, um, you're running on a bit of RNG aspect at that point in time, then which will make things difficult for you for the later turns that you run into. Uh, so the primary objective when you're trying to use status elements within the game is to at least try and get sleep or paralysis to go off when you're attacking first um, to try and guarantee the win. That is the main objective in PvP when using these uh, skills. So what you would need to do in order to guarantee this is to use an actual individual skill instead, not triple threat, but an individual status ailment skill will then turn one, uh, preferably poison because of the fact that poison can go off uh, pr uh, primarily because of the fact that poison's 
pet skill can go off uh, indefinitely. It doesn't use up any charges at all whatsoever. You just always have it. Poison is the best status ailment skill to, to bait out an opponent as soon as turn one. So that way, then you can try and use triple threat turns two and three to try and help guarantee the win, whether or not you're a defender or an attacker. Of course, if you can use any of the uh, plus or two plus status ailment skills as well, uh, that, that will help you out the most. But let's say, for example, you only have plain vanilla uh, poison sleep paralysis and stuff and you don't have poison plus poison two plus or, and, and, and same thing for the other two uh, what can i do to help guarantee that my status elements can go off uh to try and make my opponent like waste their their asuna and, and stuff like that what are some ways you can go about doing that well as of right now there's a couple ways in which you can do this the easiest way as of right now is to actually use metals such as young king mickey b which we kind of got from a high score challenge uh somewhat a while ago or so and the main idea behind using king mickey b is the fact that you would use young king mickey b within like the first few slots of your keyblade more or less uh, because of the fact that he makes you waste all of your gauges so what happens is because of the fact you have no gauges left at least as a defending player when your data gets left behind the game is going to be like oh he has no gauges left so i'm just going to automatically tap the opponent uh, and that's when you would have metals that have the vanilla sleep or poison and prowess and stuff like that uh, since they will guarantee be able to tap the opponent because you have no gauges left that's the easy way to do it using metals like young king mickey b that just get rid of all your gauges automatically however another way to get the kind of same effect is to just use any metals that have super high amounts of gauges even better if they have extra attack and they don't have cost reduction skills on them and such to make them cost cheaper essentially just use your highest costing metals to try and force you to waste as many of your gauges as possible so that way you can still try and get your last few metals uh to tap your opponent uh instead okay that's another way you can do it it's a little bit more work uh involved but it's also a possible strategy all right, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped out. I know people are starting to get an idea of how to use them properly, but I know a majority of people still aren't really 100% like understanding how to use, like how they work. So I hope this video helped out. But if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It is the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kinemarching Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.